family, I welcome you and the darling son, Jesus the Christ. Uh, if you would, please turn with me to John 19 and 17. Say amen when you have it. And the scripture reads in the American Standard Version, they took Jesus therefore and he went out bearing the cross for himself unto the place called the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. Now I need you all to put on your Holy Ghost imagination glasses and walk with me because right now Deacon Katasha is stepping away and I am introducing you to Rebecca Levi. Let us go to the throne. Father God, we thank you this day for revival, for the fusion of your soul with ours. We thank you for that Thursday night that you endured. We thank you for the Friday that you did not come down from the cross. And we thank you and look forward to Sunday because you rose as you said. I ask that you would let these words and the words to follow mine and plant in the minds and the souls and the hearts of your people because they do have a purpose. Let them tap into that purpose today and set the world aflame. All of these things I ask in your darling son, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, some of you don't know my story. My name is Rebecca Levi. My parents are Sarah and Benjamin Levi, and I've come to tell you the story of my family business. You see, my family, my father and I, made the cross on which Jesus died. It started on a Thursday night. We had just gone to bed, and there was a knock on the door. And a centurion called out, Levi, I need a cross for tomorrow. My father didn't understand because he had just made two crosses. And so he asked the centurion, well, what is going on? Why do you need another one? And the centurion said, there's a trial going on tonight in the Jewish section of town, and that man is going to be crucified tomorrow. And so I need you to get up out of your bed and make me another cross. And my father, not one to dismay the Romans, said, yes, sir. Now, me as a girl, I wasn't exposed to the family business, although I had watched my father craft many crosses that were used in crucifixions all over the Roman Empire. I wanted to learn that craft, and so I went to my father and I said, Daddy, can I help you make this cross? And he said, it's time that you learn the family business. And so we went to the workshop. And he got the cedar wood, which amazed me because the other two crosses were made from cheap wood. You see, cedar wood can be washed off and scrubbed and reused again. But the cheap crosses had to be burned after the crucifixion. And so I saw my father sand the horizontal and the lateral beam. And I said, well, Daddy, why are you sanding this beam? And he said, because the Spirit said to me to make this as easy for the man that will bear this cross on tomorrow. And so as the light peeked over the window, the centurion came and they took away the cross. But my father cried out and said, well, who is the man being crucified? And the centurion said, the one that they called Hosanna last Sunday. They call him Jesus the Christ. My father fell to his knees and he started weeping. And I had never seen my father show such emotion. And my mother ran out and she said, Benjamin, What is wrong? And he said, the Christ will die on my cross today. She said, Benjamin, get up from where you stand. Let us go to Golgotha to make sure that what the satyrian said is true. Now, my parents didn't tell me as a curious child to stay home, so I ran behind them because I wanted to see this Jesus that made my father weep and fall to his knees. And so... I got to the outskirts of town because crucifixion wasn't allowed inside of the city gates. And the sweet fig tree that had bloomed every year was barren. And so I climbed up to the branches because I wanted to see the the crucified prisoners as they came out of the city walls and I heard the horns tooting. And I saw the two men with the cheap crosses come out and the crowd laughed at them and cheered. And then the third man, heavy, grief-stricken face, body torn, blood dripping from his back, 
carrying the seat across, and there were women walking alongside of him, and the crowd moved away as the women walked, but they cried out, crucify him, this blasphemous, sinful man. So from the tree, I, I still couldn't figure out, well, which one is Jesus? But below my branch, a crowd had gathered around another man. And so I heard them say, well, aren't you Peter? Aren't you the one that walked with Jesus? And he said, I am not that man. I have just come to see today's festivities. And another man said, but now, wait a minute. Didn't you hand me a fish when Jesus fed the thousands? And he said, no, it is not I. I have come to see the festivities. But I could see the crowd moving away so I went to get out of my branch and I fell and he caught me and I said well sir why are you crying I am a bit of a forward child so his, he's crying I wanted to know why and he said my lord my master my savior is dying today well he didn't look like a slave he was a well-dressed man and before I could turn to ask him well why do you call him your lord and your master he had disappeared and so I could hear the crowds still saying, crucify him. And so I went to run a little further, and I saw a group of Pharisees. Now, as a child, my father being the crossmaker, we weren't allowed in the presence of the Pharisees. And so I hid myself. But the man that was talking to them said, take this money back. You didn't tell me that you were going to hey. kill him. You told me that you were just going to question my Lord and Savior. Take this money back. I don't want it. And the Pharisees looked at him and said, be gone with you, Judas. What we have done is our business because he was a sinful and a blasphemous man. Take your grief and your money and go. He threw the money at their feet and he ran away. I heard one of the leaders say to the other, well, what are we going to do about him? Because if it gets out what we've done, we'll be crucified. And the man looked where my tree stood and said, we don't longer have to worry about Judas. I didn't come out of hiding until they had walked away and I looked towards my fig tree and I saw him swinging and I didn't understand what would cause a man to kill himself. But I knew that I still needed to get to Golgotha because I had to know who Jesus the Christ was. And so when I got there, they had already lifted him up. And although I was loving the fact that the handiwork that I had helped my father sand just the night before, on the seat of cross was Jesus. I heard him being jeered and his face and his eyes were closing. The wind picked up and the clouds came and the sky grew dark and the man on the left on a cheap cross said, if you be savior of the world, Jesus, save us and save yourself. His face just turned more grief stricken. But the one on the right said, hold your tongue because the man that you are speaking to is the son of the living God. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Now, although his face was grief stricken for a brief second, his face began to glow and he opened his eyes and the fire that was never there before gleamed. And he looked towards the man on the right and he said, this day will you be with me in paradise? It was then that I knew why Peter called him Lord and Master. I too wanted to go to paradise. What did this now mean that my father and I had made the cross that the son of glory would now die on? Yeah. Mm. I heard him cry out, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? Those in the crowd said, well, what father is he talking to? Because Joseph died a long time ago, but I saw his eyes look heavenward. And then the thunder rolled, and the ground began to shake, and he said, It is finished. Father, unto my hands I commend my spirit. At that point, I cried out, Forgive us, Lord. But he died. I wouldn't get to be in paradise with Jesus. He died on my father's and my cross. He can't forgive me and my father. I ran home, it was silent that night. My father would always go into his workshop and work, and he didn't, but I found myself going there and making sample crosses, small crosses. I must have fell asleep because I heard a voice say, Rebecca, 
I said, yes. He said, he has forgiven you. He heard your voice. He heard you ask for forgiveness. I said, but he died, he said, but yet he lives. It is the third day. He has arisen like he said. I could still hear the voice of the centurion when the ground choking and Jesus gave his last breath say, surely this be the son of man. This man was the son of God. I'm here to tell you that although my father and I were cross makers for death, after that day we became cross makers for life. I met that man, Peter. That was his name. He did hand out the fish. He told us that Jesus came to save that which was lost and that my father and I were not lost if we turned our life over to him. We never lacked. We gave up the Roman contract. We still continued to make crosses. Some of you wear them on your necks. We write songs about them. I've heard you say, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light. I'm here to tell you today if your family has some abuse issues, if you've been hurt and maimed, or if you are the one causing the hurt and the pain, you can turn your life around and be, join, join me. Become a cross maker for life. Because Jesus got on that cross, he didn't come down. He didn't come down because it was meant for him to do what he had to do. God used the cross that we made to save millions. God will use the crosses that you go through to save thousands yeah. and millions and billions and trillions. Join me and be a cross maker for life. Amen.